fair use, fair use. Like I said, I'm just piecing this together here. Like I said, uh, Dick Gregory has always told us that the man in the skyscraper is the racist. The man that you deal with every day calls the police on you and the woman, they're prejudiced, extreme prejudice. We, what Dick Gregory said, where to, uh, uh, racism is when you can affect someone's um, gaining, right? Financial gaining. You can affect their way of life, where they live, how they live, right? By controlling their environment, what they can and can't do based off the fact that you don't like their skin color or something about them. We deal with people that are prejudiced, that don't want us around because they have prejudices, right? But they don't have the power to control, well, you can't live here because we made uh, the, the price of living, you know, uh, three grand a month for rent. When, when, when you're, when you, you know, all they're going to offer is minimum wage jobs in your area. Like Will's always told us, the people in the skyscraper, you know, jobs that you'll never see, right? The ones you only hear about in movies or in rap music. They're the ones that are, they're the ones that control what goes on in the ground. They're the, they're the racist. And this movie is showing you, right? They're showing you. A lot of those people down in Manhattan, a lot of them people down there in, in, in Times Square, they made their fortunes dealing with the wrong side of things. For, for them, it was the right side. But for us, we know it's the wrong, right? They made themselves rich. And now it's their responsibility to keep their foot on your throat. Let's get back to this. I said there was nothing missing. So there had to have been something in that box that was worth more to him than your envelope. You don't have to tell me. There's only one thing it could be anyway. Diamonds. And then there's the ring. Cartier ring. Belonged to the wife of a Parisian banker. Wealthy family. French Jews. When the war came along, the ring and everything else they owned was confiscated and they were shipped off to concentration camps. None survived. We were friends. I couldn't help them. But the Nazis paid too well. Ken, I trust that you will keep what you learned today, confidential, despite whatever you may think. Yes, Arthur. Well, I'd love to tell you what a monster you are, but uh, I have to help Bin Laden's nephew buy a co-op on Park Avenue. <laughs> I'm not sure you wouldn't tell me. We're listing you as a reference. Like I said, that's Denzel in the movie uh, Inside Man. If you want to check it out, uh, let me see here. What's the next thing? Here? Oh, so here's the next, here's here's something. I don't know how many of you know this, but Prescott Bush, the father of George H. Walker Bush, the grandfather of George W. Bush, the son of, was it Aleister Crowley in a love affair he had with Mrs. Prescott when he was doing a sex magic ritual in uh, France. And he... Uh, Impregnated this woman, his lover, and uh, spawned him. This dude was on the side of funding Nazis. And as you've seen, his heirs have somehow, uh, unfortunately for us, been able to rule over us. And somehow it's funny that they, they're not funny, but it's 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 funny that we, I mean, we can't put it together and really call it what it is. But they keep showing us that... Um, these presidents are all related to each other, and they go back to the king to sign the Magna Carta, so they know what they're doing. They know what they're fooling around with. Let me 
me see here. That was that Kanye, George Bush hates blacks, black people. Uh, where was that one? There was this one where he's, him and uh, Clinton are down there in um, Haiti, and they they were shaking people's hands, and he wipes the, uh, he wipes the, uh, the hand, after he shakes the hand with a Haitian dude, he wipes his hand off on, um, off on uh, Clinton's shirt. Let me see if it's in the videos. Hey, Amari Stoudemire did a video on uh, Israel and how they hate blacks. I'm surprised. You know, seeing how you're financially well off, you know, I'm surprised. Uh, I'll find it later. I'll, I'll find it later, and we'll do another video. But you can always check that out, but that's not what I'm looking for. Let me see. Getting back into this. Then there's the whole... Vatican and how they own your birth certificates, that part of the pyramid scheme. So the biggest white supremacists are the, the Vatican and the Pope and all that, but that's the easy one. And this is what I found while I was going through this. When it came to taking drugs. My name's Norman Oler. I wrote a book called Fair List, use. and it's about the massive use or rather abuse of drugs in Nazi Germany. Stage one is from 1936 to 41. He was basically taking vitamins and glucose. When he met Morel in 1936, he quickly became his personal physician. And Morel said, I can give you vitamin injections and you immediately will feel amazing and you will never get a cold. Hitler thought, this is my man. He woke up and he uh, rolled back the, the sleeve of his pajama and Morel came in and gave him a vitamin injection and a glucose injection and Hitler had had his breakfast. Stage two started in the fall of 1941 when the war against Russia turned bad and he started to take lots of hormones and steroids and barbiturates. He had high fever and diarrhea so he was quite, he was quite sick. They called it the Russian flu. He got for the first time he got um, uh, hormone injections from, from animals, uh, pig liver extracts, and, <coughs> and it actually worked. Uh, his, his, uh, he, he, he was back in the briefing the next day. And uh, I mean, today we would say these are, these are doping agents. Stage three started in the summer of 1943, and it is when he um, was turning to very hard drugs. July of 43, he had a, a decisive meeting with Mussolini uh, because Mussolini wanted to leave uh, with Italy uh, the, the, the evil axis. He wanted to leave and Hitler was very depressed about that. And Morel on that, on that day uh, in July, uh, for the first time, used a drug called Oikodal, Yukodal, which is an, a half synthetic opiate, an opioid, a pharmacological co cousin of heroin, you could say but with a much stronger euphoric uh, momentum to it. And after a good shot of Yukodal, you feel extremely good. And this is exactly what happened to Hitler. And um, there's reports from that meeting with Mussolini where he just um, didn't stop talking and was in such a euphoric mood that he easily convinced Mussolini to stay on board Hitler takes uh, cocaine on over 50 uh, occasions, and not a, not a soft dosage of cocaine. I mean, this is, this is pure stuff that the SS uh, delivered. So at times, he got cocaine and Yukodal in, in, a, in, a, in a period of a few hours, which uh, in, in, in drug terms would be called a speedball. He used the drugs to keep 
uh, his convictions that he formed when he wasn't taking, when he wasn't already on drugs. He just he just left reality at a point when he re when he should have realized that his that his delusional ideas of beating the whole world were was what they were, namely delusional and totally uh, uh, irrational and, and 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 not not in touch with reality at all. Basically, that video was uh, the Nazis invented meth. Uh, they used it as a super drug to fuel their soldiers. I was watching, um, what else was that? Um, the military channel. And that's where I first was introduced to that, uh, how they invented it and gave it to their soldiers, but they didn't test it long enough to know the side effects that uh, what it would do to them long term. Let's see. I was just looking for articles about uh, bankers and stuff like that. German bank defends neo-Nazi party. But I was looking for them in uh, New York. Couldn't find anything. Of course, they wouldn't know. This is, the, this is the last of it, though. Reich, right? The Third Reich, the Fourth Reich, rise of them and stuff. <clears throat> Reich, lit, written in uppercase, means empire. I had no idea. The rise of the empire. Put Reich written in lowercase means rich. The rise of the rich empire. The banking system, the financial system, the Federal Reserve. Hmm? <laughs> Think about that, y'all. Think about that. 